This is Nigeria's Niger Delta. Rich, blessed, truly one of the most beautiful places on earth. The Niger Delta region is home to the nine oil producing states in Nigeria. Even in an atmosphere of peace and security, somehow in the shadow of immeasurable wealth, millions still exist in immeasurable poverty, millions for whom there is still no opportunity to attain the often promised good life. We have in this country over um, about 1.5 million people who require to take drugs, for example. We have issues with prevention of mother to child. We have, uh, you know, uh, a very low coverage. If you look at uh, the health indices from the Niger Delta, um, it's not as great as you'd expect. The peculiarity of uh, the Niger Delta area makes us a little more vulnerable because of the oil explosion activities. This other sickness when it is rampant again, when the HIV is common to. Before, if they're sick, that they believe in this uh, uh, herbal treatment. Well, I'm not saying in a village now. Money not they now waiting with the farm. They come not they would they reach the eat up less of say they go carry give my mom make a carry go hospital. They go prefer say me they go where they for the massage. You know, go pass one thousand naira. The concern to improve and expand healthcare at the community level in the Niger Delta region was an attraction for Shell Petroleum Development Company, SPDC, as their corporate social responsibility in collaboration with Family Health International, FHI 360, to improve and expand sustainable quality health services to the people of the region. Niger Delta Eight Response Plus project is a follow-on project to the award-winning uh, and highly successful NIDA. NIDA stands for Niger Delta AIDS Response Program, designed as a partnership between the Government of Nigeria, Shell Petroleum Development Corporation, SPDC, and uh, Family Health International. The Niger Delta AIDS Response Plus project, NIDA Plus, aimed at strengthening health systems at the community and primary health care levels in 16 selected SBDC-supported health facilities and surrounding communities in the Niger Delta region. Through the program, health centers were rehabilitated, hospitals received laboratory equipment, as well as a broad spectrum of trainings for their local staff throughout the duration of the project. When NIDA Plus came, I think they look at the infrastructures, they look at the personnel management, they looked at some things on ground and they found out that they, they, they needed to, to update some structures. NIDA Plus has helped this place a lot because before now, before NIDA Plus came in, the equipment on ground that we are using now were not there. The place was, we were like having leaking roof. The place was, the, the, the structure per se now was in a mess. Uh, uh, clinical services had completely collapsed. The TBA were having, a, as the traditional bed attendants, they were having the upper hand. And that means them to be having um, a lot of cases of infant mortality and uh, uh, maternal mortality in the, in the area. And they supported us very well. Uh, ARA, antiretroviral drugs were always available. We had a CD4 machine that was uh, with which we can do CD4 evaluation. And we also have a chemistry machine too and the test kits. Many hospitals in the Niger Delta function in a state of decadence and continued decline in quality of service provision. 
It is under this backdrop that SPDC partnered with FHI 360 to support service delivery in the region through a three-step strategic approach. Health system strengthening, integrated maternal newborn child health, demand creation. They have made provision for logistics and capacity building and have made some provisions too of materials. They first train the workers and then they see the same people they go for various uh, training like helping baby breed to reduce the death rate of our babies immediately we get our babies. There is no reason why a baby should die in the center. So they, this is the model which they use in training us and we have stepped down the training to others, other people that are working here with us. A lot of uh, infections were ravaging the community before we came here. Infection like malaria, diarrhea, uh, uh, typhoid, uh, measles. We engage ourselves with a lot of outreaches. And when we are going for these outreaches, I mean, it's really elaborate. We go with a uh, mobile ambulance, where they render services for people with toothache. We run investigation on women to, to do early diagnosis of cervical cancer. All these are supported by SPDC and NIDA Plus. Because of the NIDA Plus, there's increased awareness of the health situation. Like majority of them that usually go to native doctor to go and for massaging and buying of drugs in the uh, chemists or uh, you know, drug vendors, it has reduced. When I get Bele and April, they come, they bring free tests for us. Free tests, none of us pay. We do free tests, they give us drugs, like the HIV, they still tell people, then they can't tell us about the malaria with our body, then they can't give us drugs too. By the help of the nets, who oh, they use now, join. We not to the, get problem with uh, malaria sickness again. When we went to one of the monitoring visits to the um, primary health center at Otu Jeremy, I think it's a comprehensive health center, the, what we saw was really fantastic. In fact, I said the place was like a mini teaching hospital. It wasn't even just like a hospital, talk of a primary health center, or a comprehensive health center. The facilities that were there were really beautiful. The, the way the health workers had been trained and they were carrying out their duties, the way they were relating with the clients. And then when we looked at their records, the number of cases they were seeing and the dedication I was really, really impressed. I did not know little or nothing about the management of HIV cases. But with the training I acquired, it has made me to be very competent in handling cases of HIV. We have a support group here, and uh, it's growing from strength to strength. We normally meet third Saturday of every month. We're in a positive patients are encouraged, educated, and assisted, both psychologically, physically, and otherwise, to cope with their medical condition. They told me that I'm positive, HIV positive. If maybe it was in a dream, I wouldn't have believed it, you know. So I was like, you know, in form of shock, because I never knew, I never even knew that really, it really existed, HIV. In UPTH, I met a lady, she's, she was told, she was diagnosed and she said she didn't believe such thing is in existence. She, she, she refused taking her drugs, she refused to come for the drugs until it grown to a full age. All her body, she has brushes and all that. She even told me that, I told her, why did you keep it to yourself, seems to know. That is like that. She said she didn't believe it. That she doesn't want to take drugs. That she feel like dying. She just keep it to herself like that. And she has infected two of her children in that process. You know, when I find that myself, when I find myself, say I did this kind of 
in mood. In fact, I was like, I don't die, I don't die, no hope for me again. But thank God for these people. They help me where, 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 where. For the medicine they give us, they can't direct us how to go use the drink. In fact, they direct me how to go use the drink, the medicine, so that my baby no go get that kind danger, no go enter that kind of danger, in fact. So today, as I born my baby out, my baby do test. After the test, for the result, my baby do negative. I'm very much happy for them. God will bless them well, well, well. Their hand work good. Though. Access to the community and access to, to the people at the bottom of the pyramid was also a challenge. Access to facilities is often done even by boat and it's been hard to reach remote areas. So the challenge is really getting into those communities physically, as well as the challenge of the poor infrastructure and the, um, the human development capacity levels in the area. For many, adequate healthcare is often neither accessible nor affordable. And in the rural areas where countless families struggle to put food on the table, quality medical care is typically regarded as unaffordable and inaccessible. They did uh, community mobilization. They entered the community and they, like they picked some people and they trained them. We are trained to educate the people in our community. How, how, how do we how do we go about uh, treatment? It might be never, never take it, uh, Niger, Niger plus with training. Before I'm going to my head chain, eh? you see, that's the possible now. Kuri, kuri, you know, my body is in the car. TB, malaria, HIV1. They are now like our mouthpiece in the community. So and they themselves, they go around to, when they see any of the cases that is supposed to be, to come to the clinic, instead of them going to the TB or those uh, uh, traditional people, they refer them, those people that neither plus train now, they now refer them and bring them to us. It, our place is not a comprehensive site per se, but because we don't want to lose our mothers, we don't want to lose our babies, most of them we attend to them here. We give them their drugs from 14 weeks, we give them. The babies, when they are delivered also, we give them their drugs. So a lot of that improves a lot of our services. Our PM city has grown. In fact, mothers come on their own to tell you, I'm a positive mother. In this hospital, we have not identified anyone that is positive, our babies, because our mothers use their drug judiciously, and at the end, when we test them, they are all negative. My child is negative because I've been taking my drugs accordingly. My baby has done the whole test. She's negative. Thanks to the work of socially responsible corporations like SBDC, we can look forward to a future with improved statistics in life expectancy and infant mortality. Perhaps most importantly, what is left behind the NIDA Plus project is a legacy of hope. For the medical staff in host hospitals, the exposure to current trends and developments in healthcare and the expertise demonstrated during regular supportive supervision has been of great benefit to the service providers. FHI 360 built the capacity of providers to international standards and ensured that the supported sites were equipped and enabled to provide quality integrated maternal newborn child health IMNCH services to the members of the community. If you really don't support the community, if you don't support community-based groups, you may not be able to get your pregnant woman to attend antenatal services. You may not be able to get the little boy or girl to go to the clinic for immunization. You may not get the, uh, the mother to be able to treat uh, simple uh, 
uh, infections like malaria. We implement this project through building capacity of staffs of government of Nigeria that work in their facility, building capacity of the community and capacities of community-based organization which we've engaged to drive the community component. Some youths who volunteer their time to be part of the process. And during the training, we were able to expose them to a number of practices they engaged themselves in that expose them to the risk of infection. HIV, TB, malaria. And at the end of the activity, it dawned on them that there is a need to take charge of their own health as individuals. There is also the need to take charge of the community health. Sometimes they take us out, you know, to teach us more about AIDS and how to protect ourselves, not only AIDS, malaria also, tuberculosis. At least they are improving our society. Over 80% of our society have been acknowledged of the rare diseases we have and the proper way of preventing them. So it helps the society. It has also reminded me of the education of uh, uh, unprotected sex. Currently on data we have evidence to show that there is a drop in the prevalence of HIV AIDS on Bobby Island. We have more work, more registers and proper documentation. We have a DHIS where we do our data entry and we send reports efficiently. More equipment they come. So looking at it, we not lack many of the equipment because even when they look and say some other places not get equipment when we get for here. Right now, I think we will have a handful of drugs that people really wanted, as well as those ones prescribed by our doctor. Like the side flu supplied by Nada Plus here, that was installed here, it can run, it, it, it runs more than 50 samples or 100 samples per day. With that the procedure too is very simple. You see, people we now meet with the community more, we do more advocacy. People now take HIV as a medical problem. They see the need to come to assess care as again going to churches, which is very common here. You know, when we have an emergency need and we can't get from the, the from the government immediately, you know, we call on we call on um, NIDA Plus and say, look, we need something done immediately as a stopgap measure before we get our supplies from government, and you know, we get it. No much, you know, there's no much bureaucracy in it. I don't know how long Nida Plus is going to be with us. We would love to see what they are giving to be continued for a while. As Nida Plus stands for us, did it by the fifty help us for that way? We will like where we While the functionality of equipment and continued distribution of drugs and supplies to these health centers is paramount to ensuring a sustainable impact long after the project is concluded, the outcomes of the support provided by NIDA Plus are enormous and evident. The health-related Millennium Development Goals for the Niger Delta region may still appear daunting, but progress is steady and permanent. The whole idea of NIDA Plus essentially is to strengthen the way we deliver health services rather than focusing on one or two diseases. So I'm really pleased that NIDA Plus has, has achieved a great deal. Uh, apart from the number of uh, facilities we have, we have been able to actually reach close to 800 communities. The statistics of the NIDA Plus project achievements from 2009 to 2012 show remarkable progress and success in total antenatal attendees and total facility attendants, children under 12 months old fully immunized, individuals aged 15 to 49 years using modern contraception, total facility deliveries and total life births. Obviously, the NIDA Plus project has contributed significantly you know, to uh, the realization of the goals of MDG 4, 5, and 6 in Nigeria. Because uh, 4, 5, and 6 talks to you know, uh, you know, child survival, maternal mortality, 
HIV, TB, and malaria. And in all these areas, we have seen an increased uh, you know, provision of services, particularly in the Niger Delta. We are very much aware that government alone cannot address the health challenges of our time. And if they do it, they may not be able to address it adequately. Uh, they may have the will, but the resources are not limitless. So the government will do whatever they think they can do. But once we have a support from outside, it's like a booster to make sure that the things are improved upon. More so, having the private partnership gives you a kind of a driving energy with which to drive the project. And I think that is what NIDA Plus really came in to do. I mean, that it would be such a shame that because the, the, the SPDC or FHI 3C is going away and then the services will die in the facility. No, we will make sure that it's sustained. And sustaining them means that we will also need to expand them to other communities. To ensure that services continue long after the project has ended, we have uh, built in certain sustainability measures into the program design. And these sustainability measures include co-ownership and collaboration, capacity building, a strong business model, zero tolerance for corruption, monitoring and evaluation. Because of the partnership we have, you know, government also provides services in those areas. It is easy for us, you know, to take over those sites if we find, for example, that Shell, you know, uh, and, or the partnership with the NIDA Plus uh, program has come to an end. Besides, we also have other partners that, you know, it's like we are all sort of interlinked. We have the Global Fund, which is also a partner to government. We have PEFA, which is also a partner to government. So I can assure you know, are the communities that certainly services will not be interrupted. We are in discussions with um, Shell concerning additional activities, but as a result of the fact that we as FHI 360 is implementing a project funded by USAID, the Strengthening Integrated Delivery of HIV AIDS Services Project, the project area of the Niger Delta is also included within our larger portfolio. The efforts of SBDC to improving access to health through NIDA Plus have touched the lives of many Nigerians and continue to have a ripple effect on countless more. Michelle and the, and the JV the joint ventures, the NNPC, Total, and the AGIP, we are proud to be associated with this project. <laughs>